Hi, and welcome to our liturgy on the Feast of Saints Peter and Paul. On behalf of Father Mike, myself, Father Alec, and the team producing our liturgy this week, may God's abundant blessing come upon us. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Once, when Peter and John were going up to the temple for the prayers at the ninth hour, it happened that there was a man being carried past. He was a cripple from birth, and they used to put him down every day near the temple entrance, called the Beautiful Gate, so that he could beg from the people going in. When this man saw Peter and John on their way into the temple he begged from them. Both Peter and John looked straight at him and said, Look at us. He turned to them expectantly, hoping to get something from them, but Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but I will give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ, walk. Peter then took him by the hand and helped him to stand up. Instantly his feet and ankles became firm, he jumped up, stood, and began to walk, and he went with them into the temple, walking and jumping and praising God. Everyone could see him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the man who used to sit begging, at the beautiful gate of the temple. They were all astonished and unable to explain what had happened to him. Hello, my name is Steve Rooney and I am from St Catherine's Parish. A reading from St Paul's letter to the Galatians. The good news I preached is not a human message that I was given by men. It is something I learned only through a revelation of Jesus Christ. 
you must have heard of my career as a practicing Jew, how merciless I was in persecuting the Church of God, how much damage I did to it, how I stood out among other Jews of my generation, and how enthusiastic I was for the traditions of my ancestors. Then God, who had specially chosen me while I was still in my mother's womb, called me through his grace and chose to reveal his son in me, so that I might preach the good news about him to the pagans. I did not stop to discuss this with any human being, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to see those who were already apostles before me. But I went off to Arabia at once, and later went straight back from there to Damascus. Even when, after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to visit Cyphus and stayed with him for 15 days, I did not see any of the other apostles. I only saw James, the brother of the Lord, and I swear before God that what I have written is the literal truth. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Lord, you know everything and you know I love you. Alleluia. Hiya, my name's Jacinta and I'm from St Gregory's Parish. Today's Gospel is John chapter 21 verses 15 to 19. Jesus showed himself to his disciples and after they had eaten, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these others do? He answered, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He replied, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus said to him, Look after my sheep. Then he said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was upset and he asked him the third time, Do you love me? And said, Lord, you know everything, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. I tell you most solemnly, when you were young you put on your own belt and walked where you liked. But when you grow old you will stretch out your hands and somebody else will put a belt round you and take you where you would rather not go. In these words, he indicated the kind of death by which Peter would give glory to God. After this, he said, follow me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. As we reflect and look at the personalities of Peter and Paul, Chalk and cheese would be the expression that we'd use to define them, I suppose. We see that God called them to use their personalities to spread the gospel. Peter, to use his impetuous love to look after the flock. And Paul, to use his training as a Pharisee and his strength of character to ensure that the non-Jews would be welcomed into the church. It's a reminder to us that our talents and our weaknesses too can become God's means of helping others. We only have to allow it. We don't have to be perfect for God to work through us. God can work through us, through our faults and our failings, as he did with Peter and Paul. As we start to turn the corner in our battle with coronavirus. Maybe it's time to recognise the new gifts and talents we have discovered during this time of great upheaval. Maybe it's a time to recognise we are all imperfect, all weak and vulnerable. Maybe it's a time to recognise that we really do need each other. Maybe it's a time to recognise what is really important in our lives. And start to appreciate it more. Perhaps it's a time to recognise individually 
we are a force to be reckoned with and collectively a force for so much good. Maybe it's a time to recognise that God has been working in and through us. Christianity is a religion grounded in history. It's based not just on ideas or visions, but on the person of Jesus Christ believed to be God appearing in human history. The Catholic Church also claims a unique historical grounding in the apostles Peter and Paul, who were linked directly to Jesus by call and conversion to proclaim his message to the world. The city of Rome makes a further unique claim to a special relationship by asserting that both Peter and Paul were martyred there. Peter, identified by Jesus as the rock on whom the church was founded, is held to be the first in a long line of leaders. What the church claims historically, it celebrates liturgically in today's solemnity of Peter and Paul. It's an impressive history, even if it requires many interpretive lenses to justify these claims or downplay the fact that all history is written to affirm the institutions that emerge from the crises, confusion and competition of the centuries to lock their particular narratives in stone and ceremony. The real proof of authenticity is an institution's fidelity to its founding principles. In the case of the church, it is credible only when it acts like Jesus, who sided with the poor and the outcast, taught and lived God's limitless mercy and laid down his life for love. Peter and Paul are remarkable models who both failed deeply. Peter denied his Lord to save his own life. Paul persecuted the followers of Jesus. More institutions would have been tempted to edit their CVs and dare brush out the negatives to make them seem more heroic. But it is in fact their conversions that affirmed the power of God's grace that enabled them to preach mercy and reconciliation as the heart of the good news. The church is authentic, attractive and effective precisely when it's a refuge for failures and sinners. Peter and Paul led the way in this regard. It's worth mentioning that they had some very strong personal disagreements about the direction the church should take. Peter devoted his energies to serving the mostly Jewish Christian communities, while Paul went out to evangelise Gentiles. They clashed over whether Gentiles had to observe the Mosaic law and be circumcised in order to be full Christians. Paul confronted Peter about the freedom Gentile converts had in Christ. The first church council in Jerusalem, was, which was a feisty affair, resolved this issue to allow the community to expand beyond its original Jewish identity. Again, the witness of their struggle and the need for the Holy Spirit to move the church forward teaches an important lesson to our contemporary church. Change is necessary. Even saints can disagree. Consensus is possible under the Spirit's guidance. Unity and diversity, not uniformity or the suppression of dissent, is built into the history of the church. Paul's house churches, convened by charismatic leaders, including women, remain part of church history alongside the emergence of the more Jewish model for a male, a male hierarchical priesthood. Alternatives stand in the wings to help the church adapt to changing times and needs. Tradition means handing on essentials, not holding on to cherished past forums, even when they are no longer effective. The spread of the gospel has always involved adaptation, enculturation and dialogue between generations and diverse interests, between East and West, 
across sectarian and religious lines. The Holy Father Francis is giving a clear lead in so many areas. Celebrating the memory of St. Peter and Paul, apostles, help us remember how much courage was required by early church leaders to achieve what we now enjoy. We honour them if we imitate that same spirit today. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your great love. Help us to renew the face of the earth by loving unconditionally as Jesus taught us. Come, Holy Spirit. My name is Georgina from St. Catherine's Parish. We pray especially for Pope Francis on this feast day, that our Lord will protect him and give him strength and loving wisdom as he leads our church to live the gospel. We give thanks for his vision of harmony and friendship across boundaries of race, religion and nationality. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the leaders of our faith community, that they will be rooted and established in the love and wisdom of God, and so effectively communicate where the Spirit of God is leading our communities in these challenging times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to Almighty and loving God those who are persecuted for their faith in Jesus, that they will know God's power and deliverance from evil, and that they will be empowered with the peace and joy that only God can give. We also bring before God all those living in areas of conflict in the Holy Land, in Yemen, and other areas which don't reach the headlines. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in our faith communities, that we would all know in the depths of our hearts who Jesus really is, and know more deeply our true dignity as children of God. In knowing him intimately through prayer, may we all be enabled to share the joy of the gospel to our world that really needs good news. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who struggle with fear and anxiety, that the tender presence of God would calm the storm and entrusting in God's almighty and loving power, that they would find hope and courage in facing the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before our loving Father all those who are unwell in our community, those awaiting tests and treatment, that the Lord will comfort and strengthen them in mind, body and spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up in prayer to our Heavenly Father and our Mother Mary, those who have died recently and those whose anniversaries occur at this time of year. We also remember the families and friends of those who have died, asking that the Lord will comfort them in their sorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May God the Father watch over you in everything that you do. May God the Son, Word made flesh, be with you at all times. May God, the Holy Spirit, healer and consoler, accompany you in every action. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh